Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and just buckle up because in this video a lot of new concepts are going to be introduced to you. So, so far we have done and checked out a little bit about the Mocha testing that we are wrapping everything in the before and it's all looking good with the hooks. But as I told you, this is a semi-test. The reason why I told you that it's a semi-test because we are actually running a JavaScript file using Node. We are not actually running how the test should be run up. So although this is a part of testing, but it's not fully testing. So how we're going to write the full test. Now we're going to create a new file in which we are going to perform all of our create test. Again, I highly recommend to always split up your test between uh, whatever the perform performing or task they are doing. So create, read, update, delete, in case more additional stuff. So split them up into multiple files so that it's much more easier to run all these tests. So we're going to be creating a new file and through that file, we're going to try to make an entry into the database, trying to create a user there. And this user is a simple student following our student schema and we're going to just do exactly simple that. In this, you're going to learn a few new concepts uh, known as describe. Remember, we talked a little bit about the describe in the documentation section. Each describe has it block. It can definitely have more than one it blocks so that it can perform multiple tests on a single object. That's also possible. We will be doing that later on. But right now, it's really simple. Now, again, there's going to be a few new concepts. So play, please pay high attention here. It's very important. So now we need to go into this test and we're going to create a new file. I always like to start with the MO because I'm using Mocha for that. And this is going to be a test for create. That's what I like to do next. And then followed by underscore, I just simply say test here. And of course, dot JS. So my file name is MO underscore create underscore test dot JS. Sounds awesome. So the first thing that we are going to do is import our schema. So we're going to simply say const student and our schema is actually lying inside a one directory back. So first need to go one directory back dot dot slash then inside the app and inside that we have this student dot JS. I don't need to put a dot JS because it's already a node file and in the node environment, it's not really compulsory to have a dot JS at the end. It's totally optional and we don't like to do that. Okay, so this is all good. Now, what is the next thing that you have learned? We need to provide a describe block. So how does a describe block look like? It's a simple ordinary function. So we're going to simply say describe. There we go. This takes two parameters. There we go. And the first parameter is about just describing. It's kind of a fancy stuff. It's going to just display into the terminal to make sure that you understand what particular test file you are running. So this is going to be a big block of describe. Again, you want to be really, really explicit here what you really want to do. And just by looking at this message into the terminal, you should be able to figure out, hey, this test is running from that particular file. So that's the whole reason of that. It has nothing to do anything. This is nothing specific. You can name it however you like. So I'm going to say create records. Uh, this is going to be my message that we are going to say. And uh, we're going to simply use a function here. Now, the next thing you can see in here as well, it says fn. That means function. Surely you can pass on uh, old school function as well. But in this entire course, we're going to be just following up arrow functions just like that. Okay, don't forget to put a semicolon. Now, as I mentioned in the documentation, all the describe blocks requires it block. So we're going to go it block. It block is also exactly same as describe, kind of I call it as mini describe. That would be a good word for it. And in this mini describe, oops, command Z, a couple of times maybe. In this it block, again, same thing is expected. You need to provide a name and then a callback function. Let's go ahead, quickly do that. So I'm going to simply say uh, it should be very explicit, like what you really want to do in this case. I'm going to say uh, simply like create a user in uh, db. So that's what my test is going to do. You definitely want to write a lot of words here. It should, it is always a good practice. Then the second thing is we require a callback function. So we're going to provide that. There we go. Okay. And now comes up a new thing. Remember, I told you a little bit about assertions. Now assertions are always assumed to go true. You have to write your test cases in such a manner that it never fails. Again, I repeat it again. The test cases are written in such a way that it never fails. Even uh, if the things are not returning value a back false, we have to check a reverse of that. You will come to know about that in a minute, but definitely I'm going to show you an example for that. So what is this assert? Now, first and foremost, in order to use the assert, uh, we have to import it as well. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and call the assert that is going to be simply by require 
and uh, we can directly call assert. There we go. It's actually being provided to us by Mocha. So how does this assert work? One step at a time. First and foremost, let's prove that assert always requires you to pass on a true value no matter what happens to the test. It always expects that a true value is going to be passed on. Okay, so we're going to do that and that's it. That's all what we want to do. This is our first test. Definitely it's not checking up whether the user is being created or not, but right now it's just going for assertion as true. Now it's time to run this file as well. Now as soon as we're going to try to run this file, we're going to face an error. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to simply say node, then we need to go into the tests and then we are going to go for create test.js. As soon as I run this, you should expect this kind of an error which says describe is not defined, describe is not defined, something like that. And if you're getting that, that's okay. That's totally awesome. No, these are not tests. Okay. So how to get rid of this error? Now, the moment I said that these are semi-test, we were able to run that using node. But when we move on to actual test, which are always describe and it, these are actual test, we cannot run them directly using these kinds of node here. So in, for that, we have to make a small change in our package.json file. And here we have to mention what kind of test we are running up. So we're going to remove all of this gibberish, which is echo error, whatever that is. And we're going to replace it with mocha. And again, make sure you are following the key value pairs. Both of them are wrapped around in uh, double quotes. So make sure you follow that convention as well. Okay, so that means all of our tests are gonna be running through now through a framework, Mocha framework or library, whatever you want to call that as well. Okay, so how we can run these tests now? Now, all we have to do is first and foremost, I'm gonna clean my terminal. Control L is the shortcut, both for Mac and Windows. And all we have to say is npm run test. Again, this is a really simple, make sure first you have checked the package.json, replaced Mocha, and then only you're running the test. So let's run this, and there we go. And we can see that Mocha is coming up and all these things are going good. So this is all how we run the test up here. Okay, so this looks pretty decent, but our assertion is just okay, it's not doing anything. So let's see, uh, let me just kill that and try this one more time. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there we go. This time it's running. Sometime it just freezes out and we can see that it definitely is taking a whole lot of time, 70 milliseconds. As I told you, database interaction is never, never instant. But the good thing is we, were we are able to see uh, one passing. That means we are able to pass the test. And again, it says create a user in DB. Okay, we're getting something, we're getting something. And again, in case your terminal just freezes out, just try to run it one more time. So it's totally okay, it's totally normal. Uh, sometimes system performance is not that much accurate, so sometimes we get a delay in the test running. Okay, and uh, for some reason I'm getting it again. There we go. It took a little bit while. Now again, we need to verify this one more time uh, by changing some values in here. So I'm going to just minimize that, and this time we are going to go for a test that is going to fail. So instead of having a true here, we're going to simply say false. So if any time we make a change here, then definitely it just goes for false. So we're going to kill that up here, move that up, clean the screen and try to run that again. This time we are expecting the test to fail. And there we go. So it says uh, one failed. So whenever your assertion is going to get a falsy value, it's going to actually fail. So that's the one thing that we have learned so far, and that's a good thing. And we know now how to run these actual tests. Okay, that's good. And make sure you kill that all the time. Uh, in order to make sure that we don't have to run it again and again, that's why the node mon is here. We're going to use that a little bit later. Okay, okay, that makes sense that we are now able to assert all these values. So now what we're going to do is we're going to comment this down because now we're going to write an actual test to check out whether things are good or not. Now, in the meantime, I highly recommend you to read a little bit more on the Mongoose documentation because in the next video, we together are going to be doing that. So that's it for this video. Won't be making longer videos, uh, keeping it always smaller. So in the next video, we're going to take down the first actual test that uh, that is going to be able to write into the database and is going to be able to verify that, yes, uh, a user was entered in the database. Let's catch up in the next video.